non-sparking tools, beryllium. Just like that military style boot camp. What's up, Bartlett? One nine one. Okay, I'm gonna have you report to the phone line. Hey, it's Sean Gare with UFA Fire Training uh, out here with Class 54. This week is uh, Hazmat Week. Uh, a lot of them are super excited about it. So what we're doing this week is we're teaching them Hazmat Operations and Awareness. Uh, it's two different certifications that they have to have uh, for their Fire 1 and Fire 2. Uh, being able to identify uh, hazardous material, uh, isolate, uh, initial isolation of an area, uh, deny access, and then the operations piece of that is just getting them in some plastic, uh, doing some defensive operations, whether it's throwing dirt, absorbent, uh, diverting uh, material away from storm drain or whatever they want to divert away from. And the biggest piece of that is just uh, decontamination. So with our hazardous materials team with the Unified Fire Authority, uh, having our personnel uh, certified at the operations level allows us to keep our technicians more mission specific and then we use our operations personnel to help with our decontamination. So um, yeah, in the next couple days we'll get them outside. We'll have a few scenarios for them to recon, be able to identify certain hazardous materials. I'll start thinking about uh, the area that they need to isolate and then if there's any mission specific uh, defensive operations that they can handle in chemical protective clothing. Uh, we'll get them out there doing that and then they will also have a decon corridor set up and they will manage their personnel through uh, the decon corridor and dock them out of their chemical protective clothing. So it's a good week, a uh, lot of information in a short amount of time and we are glad that it's almost over. Stay tuned. <laughs> Yeah, and most of the awareness tests and a lot of the operations tests, you're going to get questions where you have to use this book. So let's use it a few times, shall we? Can we take this home too? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you can take it home. That's fine. Just don't yeah, chew on it. Chew on it. This is your checklist. <laughs> 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 I can't read. You need a hazmat check. Hey, Jared Hardman, uh, hazardous materials specialist, firefighter within uh, UFA here. Uh, this week is part of the recruits' uh, operations awareness and hazardous materials training. Uh, they've been working on the ERG book, uh, which is a valuable resource for firefighters as first responders to go in and respond to chemical emergencies. It gives some guidelines for transportation accidents, uh, rail cars, uh, highway vehicles, um, and some stuff to do with facilities. Um, just kind of gives you some basic guidelines on emergency response for dealing with chemicals that may be on fire, for evacuation distances, uh, things like that. Just, just some basic information so they can prepare to bring the experts in. Read that question to me one more time. That question is, in the ERG, ammonia is one of the six common toxic okay, inhalation stop, 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 stop. Okay, in the ERG, and then the ke chemical name was? Ammonia. Go to the blue section. I'm going to look up ammonia. Okay, just play along. Okay, look, it's page 97, right? What is significant about ammonia and hydrous right there? Highlighted. It's highlighted. And it, the color of the highlight is what? Green. Oh. Ooh, it's Go to the green section. Hello, good afternoon. Um, sounds like uh, there's a lot of folks out there wanting to know what we're burning inside of our burn buildings. Um, well, as you see, here we go. We have what we call Excelsior. Um, Excelsior basically is this is aspen, aspen tree. They've just ground it up, turned it into these little uh, strings. They bell it just like hay. Um, it's belled up with these wires right here. They bring it in hell um, bells of hay, right? We basically take the wires off of it. We can fluff it up. As you see, you take it, it'll fluff up a little bit um, and it gives us a good ignition. Um, and then on top of that, we use pure wood pallets um, on top of that to make our fires. So, 
Um, everything, for the most part, we don't have any hydrocarbons or anything like that so that we're getting that stuff to our clothes. I mean, still bad smoke, but it's basically a big giant campfire um, if we're looking at that. Um, we just ordered this shipment. We got 510 bells. Each bell is about 75 pounds, and we kind of did a chain gang off of the truck. It came in a big semi-trailer. We chain ganged it off there. Um, so we had to unload these. They were just loaded in that enclosed trailer, 510 of them. We got done in about 45 minutes when we got them all off of there and loaded into these Connexes. Um, this is our second shipment since I've been out here in training. The first time we ordered 476 bells and that was in Camp 5-2. So that was two camps ago. So two years we went through 476 bells. That'll be dependent on what we do um, is, um, for our training um, for operations as well in our department of how much we go through. But I'm guessing we'll probably be about two, two and a half years with this, um, depending on size of camp and everything else like that. So um, this will last us a, a good while. The only thing we always have to keep a good beat on is we have to find out where we can get our pallets. But we have a lot of companies out there that um, we have a good relationship with that will give us those pallets um, and we take those, those pallets off their hands, they give them to us and then we can burn them up. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Good. Just setting up, making sure these guys are prepped for success. If this is my storm drain, okay, and I want to divert it away, it is the common thing for people to want to do what from right here? Put it right in there, okay? I'm telling you, if you start out here, okay, let's just imagine this is dry, okay? I know that it's wet right now because we have been working it. If I want to divert it away from here, if I start where I want it to go and work my way into it, what am I going to eliminate? Me being in it. Okay? You see, if I work into this, I come up, I come up, as soon as I get into here, it starts to burn it. Okay? If I go like this and come in and immediately start to burn it, where am I? Hey, it's Sean with UFA Fire Training. Today with our hazmat week, we have all of our crews just going through a skills rodeo. So you can see them behind me. Uh, they're working on uh, absorbing different liquid materials that spilled out in the open. Uh, they're diverting it away from possible storm drains. Uh, they're working on shutting down inline valves that are supplying any uh, gaseous hazardous materials inside of a building or outside of a building. Uh, we also have some suspicious stuff out here where they may have to mark or cordon off any suspicious materials or evidence of a crime. Uh, they're obviously working in their chemical protective clothing. And then once they're done, uh, they gotta go through the, the decon corridor that we have set up in this building in here. So getting people in and out of suits, helping people getting in and out of suits, uh, working with tools and just uh, mission specific defensive, defensive actions of being a hazmat operations personnel. This line was broken. You had fire coming out of it right now. What's some things that you could do? Shut the valve off. Okay. Water. Shut the valve off, right? That way you kill the, you, you kill the ignition source. Do you ever try to extinguish it? No. How come? Because then you just have gas that's filling the area. Any spark is going to ignite all of that, but however much there is in the environment. Yeah, yeah, so we just let it burn. Hey Chad with UFA, we're out here today doing some hands-on uh, hazmat training. Uh, part of Firefighter 1 and 2, they have to get their hazmat ops and awareness. So right now, as you can see, we've got them working in their suits, uh, just going down. We've got some people that are cordoning off areas or rendering, not rendering safe, but they're making the area safe so people don't go in. And really the ops and awareness level is that. We're isolating entry for the hazmat technicians and hazmat teams and then come and respond and handle that. We've also got teams doing just some surveying of the area for possible hazards. Then we're gonna put them through the decon line and let them walk through that process just to develop some of those skills so come Friday they can do the testing that they need to do for their hazmat ops and awareness. Are you following? Yeah. Which engine company is this? One nine one. You guys are in the company? Yes, sir. Okay. So one nine one. I need you guys to go check the second floor of the tower, and I, I want you just to walk around, do a recon, and just let me know what you see. Yes, okay. Sir. Yes, second sir. floor of the tower. Yes, sir. Okay. What company? One nine two. One nine two. All right. I need you to go to the tuna can. 
We just need to do recon, second floor, see if you see anything abnormal. Yes, sir. Okay? Just come back and report, just a recon. Yes, sir. Okay. This is typically about 100 PSI. Then you have your dial here. So this does have to be set depending on your phone. Right now it's set for class A. So you'll see that it's off. To adjust your percentages, you just want to turn it all the way to 1%. So you have 0 to 0.1%. Class B foam, three to six, right? So in a testing situation with the state, if you do forget your percentages, make sure you look right here, okay? If you wanna just grab your hose, it's a little quick connect, it has a diagram right here to show you how this goes on. Twist and lock, make sure that it's on. Same for your nozzle. So you've got a couple no different choices for nozzles. Smooth bore, you have a wand, and then you've got your aerator for foam, depending on what you're trying to do with it. Class, class A foam, so we're gonna set our percentages. We'll set it at 1%. What are our application methods? Roll down, bang, 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 bang. Okay, so if I wanna use the bank down method, what am I gonna do? Half an, up, up, off an object and let it bounce down. Okay, what about roll on? Okay, it's gonna hit the ground, come on. What about rain down method? In the air. Yep, just raining down. Assistant on PPE for chemical splash, given the suit, boots, gloves, helmet, tape, if you need it, it's your GA two member team. You're dressing, you're donning, you're assisting? Yes, sir. Okay, you got six minutes. Any questions? No, sir. Ready, set, go. So as you can see behind me today, we're doing our state testing and we're doing our hazmat ops and awareness testing. Uh, right here, they're donning their level A PPE. Uh, we have suits ranging from level A all the way down to level D, level A being the most important. Level A is for vapor protection. It protects our respiratory tracts completely, as well as it will completely encapsulate all of our skin and it's airtight, so no air can get in. Some of the other levels, level B, would be very similar, except Instead of being completely airtight, it's only made for splash protection and it goes all the way down to level D where level D is just our turnouts. And that's where if we have a gas leak that's flammable or explosive, it's more important for us to wear our turnouts because we could get burned. The plastic won't hold up to those kinds of fires. So we choose to protect ourselves against thermal burns rather than vapor exposure. Hello, uh, my name is Gage Holcomb. I'm 26 years old. Um, I have a girlfriend whom I love very much uh, and she's been with me throughout this process supporting me in all of my endeavors, um, waking up with me early, uh, you know, bearing, uh, carrying the burden in the same way I've been. Uh, my mom as well who's sacrificed immensely and, and, and paid a big price to help me through college and assisted me in a lot of you know, different capacities. So I have a really loving close-knit uh, community at home. Um, and really strong, wonderful women that I look, to, look up to a lot. Um, as for me personally, uh, I'm a mixed martial artist. I've competed at a national, regional, and state level in kickboxing and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, I'm an avid fan of the UFC, and I love competing in that regard. Um, I think it's a, a huge parallel and a tie with the fire service in terms of the schedule and, and mixing in training. Um, uh, as for the specific reason I want to be a firefighter. Um, so I think it's the perfect dichotomy in terms of you have roles that are more type A, um, like the military and the police force, um, that you know people in that subset are specifically attracted to, and then you have more empathetic positions that are you know community service oriented or or, or medicine based, you know like nursing or EMS. And I think firefighting is that perfect merger between the two that uh, sort of encapsulates who I am as an individual. And I've looked a long time throughout my life for a role that, you know, could fulfill me in that in that way. And I didn't really feel that I had met um, that standard or, or, or found out what I wanted to do until I came here to UFA. Um, I think Unified Fire is the best fire department in the country. I think that their training, uh, their cadre, the staff, 
the, the equipment, the, the engines, like everything that UFA has at, at, at its disposal, it's, it's competitive on a national level. So to be here is, is an immense honor. Um, in terms of the camp, it's certainly been a crucible in some ways. You know, there's a lot of uh, difficulty and, you know, physicality and, and uh, you know, I've learned a lot, a ton of material in a short amount of time. But I think it's truly been one of the most uh, incredible and fulfilling experiences I've ever been a part of in my life. And uh, it's been an absolute honor to be here. Hi, my name is David Mills. I'm 35 years old. Married, got a son. He's a year and a half. His name's Theodore. He's the best. He's a really fun age right now. Uh, big part of the reason why I want to get into fire, spend more time with my family. I think the schedule is really conducive to that. Uh, I wanted to be a firefighter for a lot of reasons, but uh, I have a, a history with it. I've done wildland firefighting with Bonneville Hotshots. Uh, spent a lot of time out on the line doing wildfire. It was a great experience. I really loved working for Bonneville, um, but it's long summers away from home, a lot of time on the road, and I wanted to spend more time with my family. Um, and obviously going from Hotshots to UFA is a, is a good match, I think. And then uh, I have a history with the military as well, and I just really miss that camaraderie, that brotherhood you have from that type of a group, and I, I think I'll get that here at UFA. I'm already getting that here at camp. Camp's going great. Uh, everyone's coming together, really connected. It's really great to see everybody learn all these skills and uh, just grow so much in such a short period of time. In a career here at UFA, I think what appeals to me is that there's so many avenues uh, there's so many specialties to choose from. You can do wildland, you can do medical, you can do heavy rescue. There's just so many options. And being a new firefighter, I don't know what I'm going to be into in a few years. And I've got plenty of options to choose from. And I can take whatever path interests me. Hi, it's Molly Doyle with UFA Fire Training again. So thanks for watching another week's video. Um, at the end of this, you're gonna see another recruitment video that we've been working on. Um, myself and some of our other employees are gonna be featured just showing our story and how we came from our past life into this life as a firefighter. So hope you guys like it. Thanks for watching. It was one of the things that I saw super early on in the fire service. It wasn't because we were all the same. It was because we all appreciated the differences in each other. I'm originally from North Carolina. I moved out to Utah after visiting my sister here. She lived here for about 10 years before I did. And I would come out every spring break during college to ski. Ended up coming out here during the summer for an internship and just fell in love with Utah and all the proximity to recreation opportunities. Didn't see myself doing a nine to five just because I did not want to be a weekend warrior. Was out on a trail run one day and stopped dead in my tracks and realized I should be a firefighter. I talked to a friend of a friend who worked for Park City Fire District and I asked him, what do I need to do to become a firefighter? And he said, well, the first thing you need to do is get your EMT. So signed up for an EMT class that day, which by good fortune ended up being the one that Unified Fire puts on. Currently I'm an engineer. And what that means is that I drive our heavy apparatus, our either our fire engine or ladder truck to whatever call we're going on, whether that's a medical call or a fire call. I'll be the one on the pump on the fire engine that is getting water from the fire hydrant and putting water on the fire, making sure that the guys and gals on the ends of the hose lines have enough water to do their job. When I started my career, I can't say that it was a direction that I saw myself going, and that's what's great about the fire service in general, and especially Unified, um, is that there are so many different directions that we could go. And I didn't want to, at the beginning of my career, decide where I wanted to go. I wanted to kind of get like a little taste of everywhere. UFA put on our own engineer school, so that was a several month course that um, I was fortunate enough to go to where we learn basic maintenance, fire scene hydraulics, and how to do basically everything that we need to do to get the crew safely to a call. I love it now, like I love driving fire engine. I love 
pumping water. I love making sure that my crew is safe. I know I've been called like my mother hen or mama bear and that's totally fine with me because I want to make sure that people are getting places safe. Everything that I want as far as recreation is right here in our backyard, which is the most important thing to me, especially in this job. We're under stress and we can see some, some things that a lot of people shouldn't see and don't would rather not see. And then to be able to have our four days off to decompress and recreate. For me, I ride my bike a lot in the summer or I run, always with my dog, usually with my husband. And it's spending that time outside that for me is critical to my physical and mental health. Six years ago, started as a brand new firefighter. And in that amount of time, I have become an engineer. I've become one of our instructors for our EMT school. I was a member of our most recent training cadre for our latest group of new recruits. Be able to do all that in six years is something that I can't say even I realized I'd be able to do in such a short amount of time. We have other opportunities where um, maybe you're a, you want to go to a wildland station, maybe you want to go in that direction. Uh, maybe you want to go to heavy rescue and you can go to one of those stations and there's just a lot of different opportunities for um, if you start to get burned out for just changing things. We cover so many different areas and so many different demographics across the whole valley. I wanted that team back that I had when I was younger and playing sports. I wanted that that beautiful cohesive entity of the person to my left and right knows what I'm gonna do and what I'm gonna say before I even do it. And when all those pieces come together, or everybody's doing their part and the team is successful, it wasn't because we were all the same, it was because we all appreciated the differences in each other. I think that is one of the most important and beautiful things in the fire service. For me, wanting to make a difference was a huge part of my career choice. I get paid to do it. I get to come to work every day and hang out with my friends and make a difference and work hard and play hard and go home exhausted, but knowing that I made a difference in my job over the last 48 hours.